Let's begin with the notion of a simplicial complex. Complexes are, by definition, compositions of simple pieces. These simple pieces we're going to call simplices. And the idea is that we're going to assemble simplices following a certain set of rules to obtain complexes. The definition is going to be straightforward. It's going to rely on a purely combinatorial approach. One begins with a set, V, a non-empty ground set, whose elements are called vertices. A simplicial complex, K, on this ground set, V, is a collection of non-empty, unordered subsets of V, these are called the simplices, that satisfy the following conditions. One, for each vertex V, the singleton is a simplex. That is, this complex contains all vertices in the ground set. Two, for each simplex tau in our complex and each subset sigma of tau, this sigma is also a simplex in the complex K. That's it, that's the definition. We'll see some examples in a few minutes, but first, there are a few items of terminology that we should clarify up front. The first is purely grammatical. We've seen a lot of words being floated around here. We've seen vertex, and we've seen simplex, and we've seen complex. Let's disambiguate these. A vertex is a point in this ground set. A simplex is a single piece that is formed by a collection of vertices. And then a complex consists of multiple simplices, satisfying certain rules. Now these are all the singular forms of these important concepts. There are plural forms as well. If you have more than one vertex, you have vertices. If you have more than one simplex, you have simplices. If you have more than one complex, you have complexes. I don't make the rules. That's just the way it is. But let's move on to some more interesting mathematical terminology. We say that the dimension of a simplex sigma that consists of vertices v0, v1, up through vk, is equal to k. That is, the dimension of sigma is the cardinality of sigma minus 1. We will often call such a simplex a k-simplex to denote its dimension. We can extend the notion of dimension to a simplicial complex by saying that the dimension of the complex k is the maximal simplex dimension within k, assuming that exists. It is, at this point, very worthwhile to see a simple example of a simplicial complex. Let's consider a vertex set V that has five vertices. V0, V1, V2, V3, V4. Our simplicial complex K is going to be the following collection of simplices, of subsets of V. Notice that this contains all five vertices, as it should, and then it has some pairs, and then at the very end, one triple, a two simplex given by v1, v2, v3. Now, as it stands, this form of a simplicial complex is maybe not so intuitive to work with. We just have these lists of vertices. How do we make sense of this? How do we visualize this? One way to do so is fairly straightforward. We can draw each vertex as a dot a point in the plane. When we have one simplices, that is, pairs of vertices, we can represent these as edges, much the way that one does with combinatorial graphs. Now it gets a little more interesting because we can represent that two simplex, v1, v2, v3, by a triangle. We can fill that in to represent the fact that these three vertices are connected together in a two-simplex. 
This gives us a pictorial representation of this abstract simplicial complex. There is nothing inherently geometric about this. This is simply a tool for us to be able to visualize what this simplicial complex looks like. But more on that later. For now, well, we've been rather sloppy, haven't we? Because we have not verified that this satisfies the conditions for a simplicial complex. So let's think, what was that? All right, we have to have all of the vertices represented. Check. Whenever we have a simplex, then all subsets of that simplex have to be represented. For edges, that's not a problem. For this one, two simplex, V1, V2, V3, Ah, yes, we can see that there are those three edges that represent the non-trivial subsets. Good. Now that last condition that we just checked leads us to a relation, a face relation on simplices that's going to be very useful going forward. Here's the definition. We say that a simplex, sigma, is a face of another simplex, tau, that is written with this inequality sign. Sigma is less than or equal to tau if every vertex of sigma is also a vertex of tau. So in the example that we just looked at, we showed that the two simplex, v1, v2, v3, contains its three one simplex faces as well as its three vertex faces. There's a very important notion of co-dimension for faces. The co-dimension of a face, sigma of tau, is the difference in dimensions. It's the dimension of tau, the larger simplex, minus the dimension of sigma, the smaller simplex. Or I should say the potentially smaller simplex because, of course, tau is a face of itself because it contains the same vertices. It is a face of codimension zero. You'll probably find that codimension zero faces are not all that commonly used. Codimension one faces, on the other hand, ooh, very, very useful in the future to us. But overall, this face relation really makes a lot of things very easy to state. For example, summarizing what we've done so far, we can say, that a simplicial complex is a collection of simplices, that is subsets of a fixed vertex set, that is closed with respect to the face relation. By closed, I mean every simplex contains all of its faces in the complex. That's it. That's the definition of a simplicial complex. It's time to turn to some interesting examples. Examples of complexes can be really simple. They can be not simple as well. Let's start with some simple ones. Consider a graph. This is a one-dimensional simplicial complex that consists of zero simplices, vertices, and one simplices, edges. The definition of a combinatorial graph perfectly matches what we have done for complexes. In fact, complexes are a vast generalization of combinatorial graphs. Next up, a single k-simplex defines a complex by including all of its faces. We've seen one simplices, two simplices. A three-simplex could be visualized like a solid tetrahedron. In order to visualize higher dimensional simplices, k simplices for k bigger than three, well, we have to be a little more creative in terms of how we visualize things, but combinatorially, it makes sense. A k simplex consists of k plus one vertices and all possible subsets thereof. You've got vertices, you've got edges, you've got two simplices, Keep going. You can count how many there are of each dimension. That's a fun combinatorics problem. But that is it. That's your full k simplex. Now, we can easily generate a hollow k simplex from this by deleting that one simplex that consists of all k plus one vertices and keeping everything else. 
this is still closed with respect to that face relation and thus defines a simplicial complex. It looks the same. It looks just like that full case simplex, but it's hollow. There's nothing solid on the inside. This is going to be a K minus one dimensional simplicial complex because the highest dimensional simplices are going to be the co-dimension one faces of that K simplex. How many such faces are there? That's a good exercise. Now, if we look at a hollow three simplex, this consists of, let's see, one, two, three, four co-dimension one faces. That is four two-dimensional faces. And then we've got all the edges and vertices along with that. This looks like the boundary of a solid tetrahedron. And it is, in fact, an example of a simplicial complex that represents a two-sphere, a two-dimensional sphere, topologically. Now, this thing doesn't feel round at all, but of course we're doing topology where we don't really care about things like roundness. There are lots of other examples of two spheres that you can represent as a simplicial complex. Some of these having many, many, many two-dimensional simplices. Now think about just how much fun it would be to write down all the lists of all the simplices in a relatively large example of a simplicial complex representing a two-sphere. It's nice to look at, but not so nice to write down. Thank goodness for computers and the ability to work with these things automatically. An ability that's going to show itself over and over again. Consider, for example, a two torus represented as a simplicial complex. There are simple versions, to be sure. But it gets really interesting when you have lots and lots of lots of simplices that are nevertheless representing globally a two-dimensional torus. There are other interesting two-dimensional simplicial complexes. We can represent, for example, a Mobius strip. One of those guys has got the twist in it. There are lots of other things as well that we can represent in 2D, 3D and higher. Ooh, that gets a little bit hard to represent visually, but of course we can do so combinatorially. There are so many possibilities for interesting objects that can be represented as simplicial complexes. But to what end? What is the purpose of all this? Why are complexes such an important structure? What are they used for? That is a question with a very long answer. One facet of that answer of particular relevance to us comes from data. If you have a data set that is represented as a point cloud, a collection of points in, let's say, some Euclidean space, then we can relate those data points based on proximity. And this can give a simplicial complex. We connect data points that are within a certain distance of each other. These connections giving one simplices or edges on pairs of data points. But you can have entire subgroups of data points that are all within that connection distance. This gives rise to simplices. The resulting face relation is closed under this definition. That gives you a simplicial complex, a very particular simplicial complex called a via torus rips complex that will consume much of our attention in the remainder of this series. That's simply one example of many, many examples of simplicial complexes that wind up being very important in applications.